Breaking the wall to queerer STEM culture. Carrie Boyce. Science is a drag. Canada. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rich, because I am. Uh, slight change of plans. Carrie couldn't actually make it here today, but lucky for you, I was in the neighborhood to talk about gays and science. Now, I know, I know, a lot of you are probably wondering what me, a straight white man, could possibly have to say on the subject, but I know a gay, so I'm basically an expert. For example, did you know that over 50% of Americans admit to still harboring some level of prejudice against queer people? Across the board, queer scientists are reporting exclusionary, offensive, and harassing behavior at work. In fact, one study of UK physical scientists revealed that almost a third of queer scientists and half transgender scientists had considered leaving the workplace because of discrimination and hostile climates. Physics can't afford to lose anyone else to biology or the arts people, okay? The math is gonna do that for them. In Canada, where I'm from, every member of my team has at some point been told that they were too loud, too bubbly, or too feminine for science, which is wild, because science doesn't exist in a vacuum, okay? It is shaped by the people who do it, and those people are shaped by the communities in which they live. So it's time for another rebellion, as we call out science to call us in. Enter drag. Now, if you're unfamiliar, or maybe even feeling a little scared right now, please don't panic. There's an equation. <laughs> Just kidding. I told you the math was too hard. <laughs> RuPaul probably described it best when they said, we're all born naked and the rest is drag. Everything about how we present ourselves, no matter how you identify, is a form of drag. And as an art form, it exaggerates and bends gender expression. Nowadays, drag shows are a beloved touchstone of queer communities. And so in 2019, we started Science is a Drag, the world's first fully science-themed drag show, where we take scientists, we dress them in drag, often for the first time, and we train them to share research with the public in queer-friendly spaces. Our kings and queens are serving drama and science in equal measure, turning live DNA extractions into burlesque performances, highlighting the climate crisis with lip syncs and fiery costume reveals. <laughs> they're challenging our preconception of bees using Pictionary, and they're teaching us the correct techniques for flossing using feather boas. They're giving us stand-up, they're giving us dance demos, they're sharing science in ways we actually remember, because this show is anything but painting by numbers, probably because we spent so much time painting our faces. But more than just a form of entertainment, science as a drag takes an intersectional approach to challenging the cis-heteronormative stereotypes and cultures that exist in science, instead embracing our diversity, differences as sources of enhanced resourcefulness. It provides an empowering and inclusive platform for queer scientists and communicators to share their passion for STEM in an unapologetically queer manner, and it creates a safe and accessible space for queer communities and their allies to engage with science without fear of exclusion or judgment. In a handful of shows, we've already engaged hundreds of people in person, tens of thousands more online, and been featured in local and international publications. Over 50% of our audience report they'd never attended a science-themed event in the past, and they wouldn't have come to our show if it weren't for the drag. Almost 90% report feeling more comfortable at science as a drag than typical science events, and unsurprisingly, they all want to come back for more. And they are, because it's the emotional impact of engaging with science at our shows that hits different as performers and audience members alike connect different parts of their identities together to embrace who they are fully. For our performers, we leave a longer lasting impression as they realize they can be the role models they never had before, mentoring the next generation of presenters and bringing their whole selves to work. We've already seen replication in places like the UK and been invited to support shows in 40 cities around the world, including Berlin. Demand is high, so high, there are shows often book out within minutes. And that's because Science is a Drag isn't just a queer show for queer people. The beauty of drag is it's so loud and sparkly and in your face that whether or not you consider yourself a science person, you can't help but stop and pay attention. And with a rise in hateful 
discrimination and violence against queer communities, Science as a Drag provides a sanctuary rooted in the joy of discovering science through the powerful art of drag. When loud voices decry critical thinking and the world feels like a freaking dumpster fire, it is art, creativity, and good humor that will break the wall to healing and inclusion. My name is Carrie Boyce, and I'm, well, I'm a lot of things. I'm Irish, I'm British, I'm an aspiring Canadian. I'm a white woman and a science communicator. I'm also queer and disabled. As we science is a drag, I'm learning to take up space, to embrace the kaleidoscope that is me, and I'm learning that science is better off for it. I'm enough, just as I am. And so are all of you. Thank you. Yeah.